This is old Kim. This is not a spring chicken today. We're going to be talking about a subject matter I'm actually quite familiar with because I hear about it all the time. Yeah, well, it's her domain, not mine. I've only actually ever been to three, three in my entire life. You've been to more than that, haven't you? No. Oh, I thought you had. Well, I've been as a guest, but I've never been on the other side of the camera. I've only been on the other side of the camera three times. I'm only invited when other people don't can work so he's the backup person because I, I don't I don't harvest things other people do I work all the time and they feel sorry for me because I'm old and bring me things to drink so <laughs> which I'm happy about <laughs> so anyway, I'll go anywhere to get free food and drink so anyway what we're talking about today is gifting suites well gifting suites are actually a form of product placement and I've heard people go what is a gifting suite and why do people do that well, it's something almost totally unique to Southern California. It's where it was created, which, uh, like I said, in my day, it did not exist because they just put things on tables and people would come by. The same bags, they had great god awful big bags. You go by and put, you put, you know, like DVRs, television camera. They had, they used to give away portable TV sets. You'd put a portable TV set in the bag, but you had, you had the, somebody from the studio walking around with you, collecting all of this stuff. So. Well, and there's different ones. There's gifting suites, there's style lounges, there's beauty suites, and you're going, well, what is the difference? I mean... Yeah, well, she can explain. She's the expert. <laughs> Very simplistically, gifting is where they gift you a product. Although I will tell you, the last time we were at a gifting suite, somebody asked for it back, so somebody joked and said they should call it an Indian gifting suite. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, there is a different opinion. Okay, the, as I do understand, the main the problem with all of the suites is, is that expectations. And expectations basically depend upon the time of year, the time of day, and where it's being held. It has a lot um, to do with it. And part of it has to do with what the vendor was told yeah. and what their expectations were. Okay, um, A style lounge, usually as the name suggests, has to do with style. It is not a gifting suite, and typically when they do a style lounge, they're talking about jewelry, gowns, something to help stylize you, and usually those things are for loan. Mm -hmm. Okay, Beauty and couture suites are not gifting suites, they're usually service suites, which means you might be getting facials, you'll be getting eyelashes and things like that. All of them are a way to expose your brand or your product to clients. Yeah. yeah. Because they're, um, they're, in a sense too, they're actually, most of them would love to see their product used on television and motion pictures. That's why they tend to hang with people that they think can basically promote their product at the best. It has nothing to do, it really has as, uh, it's not as much, I think, to do with word of mouth as it is. A photograph is actually worth a thousand words. Well, you know, some of the gifting suites and style lounges will tell you that the photograph can only be used for specific purposes, right? right? So what happens is a lot of times the companies, when they come to a gifting suite or style lounge, they meet with celebrities, um, they meet with stylists and you know VIPs, and so they introduce their product to them, and in return, they usually give them a product and they take a photograph. Yeah. Now I will tell you, because I've seen it on both sides, I've seen companies where they give them like, one ounce of bottles of shampoo and then oh, they yeah. expect a celebrity to take a picture yeah. with it. I mean, you know what I mean? The, comp the celebrities get paid for endorsements, yeah. right? There is some value, otherwise you wouldn't be paying all that money yeah. to get there. What I have seen, which is, well, I've seen the mm -hmm. good side of it. I've seen people that have never been to the streets before and mm -hmm. are totally wound up about everything. They're walking, to, oh, look at this, and, and they are so wound up and hyper that you know, was it one that we went to one thing, and we had actually a major television star, had starred for seven years in a series. I've never been to one of these things before, and I've got he's got hands fulls of stuff, and, and it's said, it's hey. actually really exciting. People are usually in a really good mood at gifting suites. Yeah, but like but the first time they've mm -hmm. been there, I mean, I'm like we actually like what? They another gave me things. we were in one suite where one I sat there, spent a lot of time over in the lunch area. We get talking to a guy who had an Oscar. The movie was in one four Oscars this year. <laughs> God, said they didn't exist when I was here the first time in Hollywood. Yeah, you saw the wide-eyed, bushy-tailed. Oh, yeah. I mean, he was all this. He was just, you know, like hyper about. He said, "I got this over here, you know. I got. I went there, and I did. You know, I didn't realize that you could do this, mm -hmm. you know. So they they get the first timers are just totally. It's total amazement. Yeah. Yeah. And then the 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 okay, and then as I understand what what I see. 
the, the suites are also almost always aimed at a different audience. The, each suite is aimed somewhere else, you know. Yeah, for example, I mean, how, first of all, how do you know if a suite is good or right fit for you? And you talked about aimed at a different audience. For example, if it's a, a gifting suite aimed or honoring the Academy Awards, you will tend to have more film people there. If it's honoring, let's say, the Kids' Choice Awards, it's going to be focused more on kids. Oh, yeah, little girls yeah. wearing skirts that are way too short for them, mm -hmm. wearing heels and trying to look older. I saw that the other day. I thought it was cute. Everybody, okay, I, I can guarantee you when I was that age and I had to put a tuxedo on, I really did not like people. Oh, he's so cute. Isn't he adorable? So they didn't like that either. Oh, well, I happen to be very grown up. That's what one of the girls said. <laughs> he had like, like about nine or ten years old wearing, a, wearing an outfit right above her butt and high heels walking around looking like she was a little girl. So but she was having a good time because she'd never been. We also seen... Uh, and another one, a couple of teenagers basically that had never done it either and mm -hmm. got away from their handler. Mm -hmm. They were cute. <laughs> mm -hmm. Didn't, I don't think, I wouldn't have called them cute in front of them, but those, but those are things aimed at kids. And then there's also, um, actually you have the suites aimed at reality stars, a lot of them. Actually it's one of the trends that we've been seeing more and more of. Um, before they went for the bigger names that were well known, but reality stars are beginning in increased role in gifting suites for this main reason is first of all they're easier to get usually yeah. okay um, but also because the reality stars seem to have they in a way more control over what item they can utilize in their production yeah because it's um, I don't think because like I said if you're doing a television show or movie other than the fact I used to do lots of westerns and mm -hmm. they were very happy that I bring my own gear with me which would be boots and a gun and holster mm -hmm. and I and a saddle and the blankets all that but anything else clothes they would dictate who you know mm -hmm. whose jeans it's you were wearing selected. whose shirts you were wearing and that's how films and stuff are done but reality shows it's just like I think you're free to bring anything that you own with you yeah and it depends on the show but part of it is I think they have a lot more freedom for selection now one of the things I'm discovering is that the reality stars are more US based Whereas the film and, t film and TV are more internationally based. So yeah. depending on what you're looking at for exposure as a brand can make a difference. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I think also the reality people have a higher image quotient, which is recognizability than, okay, like I've seen a people that basically they recognize, you know, I actually have screwed up a few people's interviews when the guy comes, oh, hi, how are you doing? Which mm -hmm. is why I tend not to do these things because. The, I mean, the other day we were we read a suite, and basically, the, you know, would you please get out of the way? I'm trying to do this, and then, oh, hi! And he comes over, and we get done. And go, do you know him? He said, Well, oh, I've known him since the uh, from back in the hitch days. And he said, You have known him for that? Yeah. And he said, We've done we've done a lot of bad movies together. Mm -hmm. And then there's all of a sudden. Uh, you know, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interstop. The guy's apologizing to me. I'm trying to photograph the, what's going on. And then again, the woman, the woman, oh, did you get the pictures you wanted? I'm certain, you know, we can have, we can know. I said, no, because it was a good thing. I said, but it was a neat thing. But see, his IQ quotient is way down because he doesn't do much anymore because of his age. Mm -hmm. And uh, that reality people have high because they're all over television. And they're tw they're doing Twitter, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all of that. So some of their their reach and sometimes, but it depends on what you're looking for as a brand. Yeah. Because for example, one may do you a lot of good, and yeah. the other may do you no good. Yeah, it's the same. She's done. She does um, the ESPN stuff and uh, other things too, which she's done and. Some athletes are really welcome, other athletes. I mean, you can have a guy, for instance, that basically is the top in his field, but basically is not really liked, and he doesn't get advice to those mm -hmm. things. Uh, he can be somebody that's down here that basically has it. Okay, why do all the athletes on Dancing with the Stars always do well? Mm -hmm. They have a huge fan base, even if they're not major stars. And it's that fan base that promotes those suites. The other thing is location, and you're thinking, why does location make any difference? I'll tell you that. <laughs> um, if you tell me the location of suite's going to be, I can probably guesstimate what size the suite's going to be and have some ideas to the attendance. And you're going, what? How could... Yeah, 
because we've done enough of the suites. We know how large the capacities are. We know how easy or difficult it is to get into different places as well as parking. But also location could have to do with something like, oh, if you are doing a gifting suite at Sundance, expect to spend more money. Because, first of all, Sundance costs more money to rent the venue. Second, it's going to cost you more money to get there and stay there. Yeah. Okay? So, add that on top. And then in return, what do you get for it? Do you have a, a higher possibility of A-listers? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Goes. Doesn't mean you're going to. No, but, but the, you, you the, could. The, basically, it's more of, it's not like throwing a dartboard and hope that somebody's going to, you know, you're going to hit somebody. It's just, there's a lot of people that come. There's not as many as they used to because the fact is, is that it really, um, honestly, we were at a thing talking to a gentleman and another woman that basically they own places at Sundance and were trying to lease the places to other people because they couldn't afford to go anymore. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it is, like it, in my universe, which is film entertainment, the three words were almost important. It's always synonymous with anything, location, location, and location. Mm -hmm. Next one I'll say is people, and you're going, why does people make a difference? It, you know, it's always the people that you work with. What has their history been? What is their background? Do they focus mainly on a mix of having media as well as talent there? Is it somewhere where they've got an agreement where only one, you know, maybe they only work and they have no cameras, they have no video, so basically the people go to the suite, but as far as exposure, your brand's getting virtually no exposure, right? right? So that's something to think about. The other thing is a lot of times the gifting suites will go, and it, it sounds really good. Okay, we've got People Magazine, we've got Us Magazine, we've got ET coming here. And that sounds really great. But I will tell you, what does it mean in operation? <laughs> okay. It means People Magazine is coming there specifically to look for people. Mm -hmm. They're usually looking for the celebrities, yeah. right, to ask them a few questions. Does that mean they'll talk at all about your product? Not likely. Not likely. It's not mm -hmm. likely you're ever going to get your product mentioned on, on a lot of the major things because it's the person. If the person happens to be holding the product or something, they might actually talk about it, but they actually have to have it in their hands when the guy's doing the interview or the woman. Well, probably. the other part is because we do so many interviews, I've noticed that with celebrities that a lot of times they will not mention the brand. Even when you ask them specifically, the younger celebrities might mention it. The ones that have been older will say, unless they really love it, like it's a gown designer, they'll say, oh yeah, I got some cool glasses. Well, yeah, I, mean, I noticed that the mm -hmm. other day because uh, they had, one of the celebrities was there, I'm standing there, and we'd been talking, and they wanted to do an interview. I actually got interviewed because I used to be a celebrity. Really, I don't know. But um, uh, the guy, you know, he said, oh, they're going to, he said, will you hold my bag and my, because he had a bottle of alcohol mm -hmm. with him, you hold my bag and this while I do it. And, and I sat there and put, you know, put the bottle behind my back and hold the bag over my shoulder. And um, because he they, they did not want to be seen with a bottle of alcohol on him. Mm -hmm. So basically, they got a nice interview from him about what he thought about the suite. He didn't mention any products names and what he was doing. Mm -hmm. But so in a vet, that he was a negative thing for the interview because he only talked about, you know, well, I was actually, I enjoyed being here. The service was nice. He didn't name the suite either. Mm -hmm. Never named it once. Never named a sponsor. Never named the suite. He just talked about how well the people were really nice and that, mm -hmm. that he enjoyed his time there and then what he was doing. That was the interview. That's all the company wanted was him to talk about like that. So it was a it was a negative major appearance for a person. Well, and part of it depends on your expectations. Now, I've seen people where, for them, the big deal is meeting the people. Yeah. There's some people, it's like, no, you don't want to be there, you just want your product exposed. Um, and a lot of times, if you're there, you're giving them something, they will take a photograph with whatever, yeah. with, with your product, and you can meet them. Oh, well, actually, we did see a lot of nice, okay, uh, a gentleman that I, I don't know if I can actually say it, was uh, the gentleman from Dancing with the Stars. Mm -hmm. He is the nicest human being on earth. He took pictures with everybody at every booth. Well, it's, it's so, almost kind of like an unwritten rule, yeah. okay, is that if they give you something, you allow them to take a photograph of you. Well, they but, weren't even giving him things. This, could you but, pose with a picture? But okay. sometimes, I so, mean, the people are just nice and they enjoy yeah, it and nice. they do it. I mean, those are, it's just like he's another one of those people, that made, he was amazed by everything, mm -hmm. but but he's just, he was a happy person. And we've seen these happy guys, they just, they're just glad that they're there. And they'll talk to you. They'll talk to you like you're, you know, you've been, you've known them for decades. And so, <laughs> but 
they're they're extremely nice, and that's when that's what makes these sweets really good is when you have these really nice. Big, See, big some of them shop. are really really nice. Yeah. Now, the other part is when you're looking at the gifting sweets, you're sitting there looking at all this promotional material, and you're going, "Oh my gosh, look at all these people are going to show up." Well, guess what? <laughs> okay. Um, there's a difference because we look at all these pre uh, press releases. There's a difference between confirmed talent versus invited talent. Yeah. <laughs> and the celebrities, I will tell you, a lot of them, they may be extremely busy. They may have confirmed, but you know, I've seen them. Okay. They're coming from set. They're going to yes, set. They've got and, and the problem with the industry is call sheets can change on you, mm -hmm. which means you actually could have an Academy Award winner that was going to show up that got called to do reshoots or oh no we we've changed the uh, we changed what we're doing because of the weather because the sun is dipping mm -hmm. in and out so we need you here which means if he's here he can't be there so the problem is they cannot they can't guarantee it that's right so I mean there is virtually no way to guarantee it so part of it is if you're kind of disappointed because all those people didn't show up it's like. You know, it's, and you're like, well, we paid all this money. Well, we can tell you what has happened in the past. We can't tell you what's going to happen in the future. No, they only base it upon, okay, this is, um, it, it's the one in where I grew up in. It's what are you doing tomorrow that's mm -hmm. important. With, with these sweets, it's what you did yesterday that's important for the sweets because mm -hmm. that's all they have to go by is how good they were yesterday. And the company provides a venue where you have a place to introduce your product. And we have, we have seen more products that are on the shelf today, because I, I keep saying people which can give me trouble. Actually, stars are used as guinea pigs for the product. If a star likes the product, the star will self-promote the product, and it can end up in a store. We have seen uh -huh, that. Oh, we've seen that. Every with beauty products, food products, simple things, you know, end up in big, you know, a lot because of what they've done in a gifting suite. So. It is, it, in a sense, you place the product with the performer, the performer, if he likes it. They'll promote it. They'll, they'll, promote they'll it. talk about it. So. And the other part is is the, the mix. The the gifting suites skew female yeah. versus male. No. And one of the reasons they skew female is typically the people that are putting them together are female. Yeah. And females get products they like. Oh, <laughs> right? I know. I mean, okay. There's very little male products. That any... But there are some male products. Right? And part of it is, is if you have a product that's more skewed towards male, that doesn't mean don't be afraid to do it. Because see, part of it is they need, the gifting suites need products that more males are attracted to and gives them something to be excited about. We can tell them, um, an indie eraser, mm -hmm. basically, we really nice guy, we've talked to him because we've seen him, at, she's seen him at sweets and he said, yeah, I'm still using those products that my girlfriend got me, now as his wife, of course. You know, she'd get, you know, she'd get, uh, okay, a lot of the hair stuff is, is unisex mm -hmm. and he basically is sort of well known for his do. <laughs> he uses his girlfriend's hair products all the time. He's very happy about it. But, um, I mean, uh, I've, I've seen some great partnerships result from Gifting Suites where brands um, work with celebrities that love the product where the brands are brought into television shows, yeah. not just independent films or reality series, but television shows um, because they love the product so much. And the product is sometimes also uh, sweet is the first stop before they go to home shopping. Mm -hmm. And they're sort of like, you know, they're, 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 and once again, back to my guinea pig approach, they're basically testing out their product before they take it to home shopping. Mm -hmm. When we ran into that a couple of weeks ago, we got a lot of those people there were heading to eat a different one. Of the, yeah, the, we're very proud. We're going to be on this next week with this product. Well, it's, it's a great way to introduce a product. Mm -hmm. Because part of it is, it's like a launch party in a way. Yeah. It's a, you introduce it to all these people that, now a lot of it is, here's, remember celebrities have Twitter accounts. Yeah. They have f Facebook accounts. They have these, you know, this, this huge following. So part of it, it's a way to get your product to have somebody talk about it, help generate some interest right before your launch. Yeah, so we, you know, hopefully we're going to be able to expand more upon these topics tomorrow. You know, We've already done product placement in films and TV. We've done a second form of product placement, which is gifting suites. And tomorrow, we'll expand on things again. So basically, we're going to cover the whole unis, universe of product placement this week. Mm -hmm. So until next time, this is Old Cam. And this is not a spring check. And we're here yesterday, today, and tomorrow for more information. You can go to www.montebello.net on the net or our commercial 
news site, which is mbnnewsvideoweb.com. And wherever you're watching us, subscribe to us, follow our daily newscast in 3D. And thank you once again for over hundreds and hundreds of millions of links to content on the internet. But of course, follow at us on Twitter at Monty Bubbles and also at The Travel Suite.